I started this channel, I did that just for kind of, you know, wanted a little bit of anonymity, but I'm not a celebrity, <laughs> so I don't think there's any need really to do that. Um, so yeah, uh, just figured now that the channel I've restarted it, might be a good time to just start doing videos like this.
transitioning. Going into this game, into the seniors, I was talking to a few friends about this, like, how much of that is he going to do in seniors men's football? Will he try and dial down that a little bit? Will he, will he go against his instincts and want to have a bit of a halfway house? How much of those extremely progressive Positional play. Okay, yes, yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true. And we've seen some amazing stuff with Pep over the last few years, and he changes it. And Arteta does the same as his major disciple. You know, great examples being John Stones moving from centre back into centre midfield, which is amazing. Um, we've seen it with the two tens rather than eights this season, in particular. What's been pretty fascinating is we go. Lewis's position, starting a right back but almost being a 10. Fascinating, right? Lee Carsley does it with multiple positions in the same team. It is nuts. It's chaotic. I'm going to give you some examples. But before I do that, before I do that, the pre-match interview with Carsley, I found fascinating. One of the questions they asked was, if you could kind of describe said he said right trying to get the best out of individual players and putting them into positions that plays to their strengths so they can do the things that they're good at more often wow we saw that against Ireland and I'm going to give you examples right so let's go to the back four first of all let's go to the back four and in fact Let's go, let's go first of all, before that, let's go Jordan. I'm going to take you through the team. I'm that excited. I am giddy as a schoolgirl about what we saw from Lee Carsley last night. And I know what you're going to say. Oh, it was against Ireland and blah, blah, blah. I'll get to that. Right. Jordan Pickford. Jordan Pickford. What did we see in the Euros, which was a concern for most people? The volume of long passes that Jordan short passes last night he was able to do that and that is one of his biggest strengths playing short passes with the ball because of what was going on in front of him he must have been loving it Pickford loving it and so Jordan Pickford one of his big strengths playing out from the back short passes he was able to do that why well what was the back for you had Trent Alexander-Arnold at right back Mark Gaye as right sided centre back left-sided Harry Maguire left-sided centre-back which we know he prefers that and then Levy Colwell left centre-back which he did a lot for Chelsea last year but we know he prefers centre-back that's where he played for um, he, he played for Carsley in the under-21s as his captain as left-sided centre-back and thankfully he started this year uh, under Maresca as left-sided centre-back so what was going on so first of all, on the ball, Trent was doing what he does for Liverpool, moving from right back into the centre. So not playing him as a centre midfielder, which is where we saw problems under Gareth, but doing exactly what Klopp did and what um, Arne Schlott is now doing. He, is he the best in the world at that, moving from right back into a primarily almost a six position a lot of the time? We saw that a lot last night for England moving into a 
sixth position. Maybe he is. Yeah, he might be the best. We also saw him a lot in the right half space, almost as a 10. And we saw him wide right a lot. Very, very, very high. He's, he, was, he was occupying, I would say, four different positions throughout the game. It was amazing. Now, in the second half, he probably did try too many Hollywood passes and gave the ball away a lot. So he needs to curb that. But we saw some amazing stuff from him. First half, he picked it up very central in the sixth position. And he played a, a raking ball with the outside of his foot all the way over the top for Anthony Gordon for a one-on-one. One -on -one. Anthony Gordon was in the number nine position. Got a one-on-one, -on -one, used his speed. He actually, it was saved. And, and nothing came of it. We could have probably won that game seven. It could have also finished 7-3. But, yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. But that was Trent's position, right? Moving that. Matt Gay was the right-sided centre-back. Why? What is Matt Gay good at? He's very good on the ball. He's a really good defender. He's an excellent one-on-one -on -one defender. And he's very quick. So when Trent's doing that, Matt Gay's got a lot of, a lot of room to cover there. Centre-back hybrid 
receiving the ball from the defence a lot alongside Trent. Declan Rice is playing further forward, hence the goal, hence the goal that he scored arriving in the box. But it also means that England's high press, who do you want up there? You want Declan Rice. So Declan Rice is backing up the likes of Gordon Greenish Kane and winning the ball high up because he's the best tackler that we have in the midfield. Everything is working in clockwork. It looks at times chaotic. It's not. There is extreme method to the madness. So, so you saw a lot of that rise for the forward. You also though saw a lot of rotational interchange between almost carousel like what you saw. What did Fergie say about um, Pep's Barca team when they beat us at Wembley in 2011? Xavi, Busquets, Iniesta is like they were on a carousel. How do you mark that? You saw it a lot with Copy. Rice is playing alongside Kane as a nine with Copy and Trent deeper. Sometimes Trent's in the right half space. I saw Declan Rice in the second half loads at an orthodox right back position. It was amazing. Absolutely. Ireland didn't know whether they were coming or going. Further forward than that, then. Okay. So, and also, guys, if you watched the commentary last night, the commentary weren't, and I'm not saying I'm like a football expert but it does annoy me like when you see the team sheet 4-2-3-1 yeah I, I sort of on paper 4-2-3-1 this is positionless football at times there's a semi structure semi structure but there's so much interchange that you're going from a 3-5-2 to a 3-4-3 to a 4-3-3 it's arbitrary it doesn't matter none of that matters so, you know, they, everyone kept referring to Grealish as a 10. If you look at his heat map, he just literally played all over the pitch. Grealish was receiving at times from the defence. Grealish was given a free roll. He was given a complete free roll. Just Ronaldinho-esque, do whatever you want. He was popping up on the right wing. He was popping up wherever the space is, Jack, go where you want. It's, <clears throat> he wasn't actually central that much. He was actually on the left wing, a lot like he is for City. And why is that? Anthony Gordon. We'll get to Gordon. I'll, I'll get to Gordon. Saka probably was actually the player on the pitch that had his, his, own, his own position that he plays for Arsenal the most and didn't drift from that too much. But why is that? Because what's Saka's best position? Well, actually, a wide right. You know, drifting in from that Mohamed Salah sort of esque. He does that for his club, just, let's just play him there then. He held the width on the right a lot. And then when it was time, time to, he broke it behind a lot as well. And that thing where he goes for the ball as a dummy and then sprints it behind. And Ross Townsend on commentary was picking up on this a lot. It's his go-to move. And Trent was picking up those runs. Play, he must have played him in, in behind three or four times, Trent. Like he plays Salah in behind. So they kept... For what Saka does at club level, it was quite orthodox for him. Ah, oh, I say this with a massive smile on my face. Harry Kane. Harry Kane. What does Harry Kane do so well and has done so well for years at Spurs? He drops deep. He gets on the half turn and he looks for the runner and plays the ball in behind. What is the partnership in the Premier League that has the most goal and assists combined together? Harry Kane, Young Min Son. Who played the Son role? Anthony Gordon. What did we not have in the Euros? Ever. Ever. You had Bellingham and Foden that once he played into, into feet, everyone's going, Harry Kane's a bit shit. Harry Kane just wasn't able to do what he does in the Euros. He wants to drop deep. And he had the absolute license to do this. Harry Kane had probably three chances in the box, right? That on another day he would have scored. So he's getting in the box still. He's getting on the end of chances. But at times, Harry Kane was dropping to a number six role. It was unreal. And all the all the stuff that you saw in the Euros where we, we were going, Harry Kane's dropping too deep. No one's leading the line. Yeah. Because we didn't have any runners. Harry Kane dropping deep. But Anthony Gordon 
amazing. So how he came had license to drop deep and to play balls in behind. So you saw Grealish on the left a lot because Gordon had vacated that space to play as a central striker. Now he did this a lot for Lee Carsley in the under 21s. Did he win player of the tournament, Andy Gordon, in the 21s? I, I think he did at the Euros, doing that exact role. His, his job was to get on the end of chances, using his pace and stretching defences. What did we see in the summer? With Spain, Lamine Yamal, Nico Williams. That exact kind of thing. What was Morata's job? Drop deep, link play, high and wide. Saka and Gordon with a high and wide. Kane drops deep, links the play. That's where you want him, man. That's where you want him. Harry Kane is going to back in this team as well, by the way. He is going to score. Um, he could have got a hat-trick in this game. So then, yeah, that, that was that was what, what Gordon was doing. Two final things that I want to talk about, right? So, you go, Rob. Okay, that's my name, by the way, Rob. Just shared that. <laughs> um, Rob, when, uh, when you've got players moving out of position that, isn't that a problem defensively? It can be. Yeah, it, it really can be. And what we saw was Ireland had quite a few chances. And you would say, OK, against a better team, they're going to punish you. I accept that. Carsley is playing a very high-risk, high-reward strategy. It is an opposite problem to what we saw with Southgate. It's the exact opposite problem. Carsley's approach is that of Spain's approach in the Euro. High-risk, high-reward. But it's it's that mentality of people saying that England overall got the best squad in the world. We have to go with our chest out and say, we're not changing anything. This is how we play. We're just going to play you off the park. We will concede chances, but we're going to dominate you. Ireland had six shots in that game. They only had one on target, guys. England had 19 and six on target. We had 72% possession in that game. It was unreal. It was unreal. Absolutely unreal. So defensively, there is things to work on there. But when players are out of position that much, you know, you go, where's the defensive structure? The defensive structure comes from they press like madmen. It is Pep's Barcelona. It is the whole Ranjik thing, right? Yeah, Ralph Ranjik on the training pitch with the Red Bull thing. He has a clock on the side of the pitch. You need to win the ball back in three seconds. That is what you saw from Lee Carsley. The pressing was actually very, very good as well. We won the ball high because if you win the ball back extremely high up in the final third, it doesn't matter the players are out of position because you've got the ball back already. That That is the defensive plan. The final thing that I want to talk about, which was so refreshing, you didn't see this ever for us in the Euros. And look, we got to the final. I'm not saying that Lee Clark Carsley will be more successful than Southgate, but will it be more enjoyable to watch? Oh my God, yeah. Oh my God, yeah. It will. It really will. Multiple times, we had a three or four, sometimes five players arriving in the box. That is difficult to mark. Very difficult to mark. And that is why we had six shots on target. And that's what you're going to get with Carsley. For me, guys, I, I expected this before we, he came in. I was a big, big fan of him being announced interim. Give him the job now. That's it. They won't, obviously, but give him the job now. You're not going to do better. You, you, there isn't a manager out there that's available that is going to be able to do better than what Carsley did last night. I'm telling you. Carsley. Minister. Hope you enjoyed the video. Speak to you soon.